The last part I would call evaluation and revision, and it consists of three steps. The first is reflection, and that's the time for teachers to reflect on the experience of teaching the unit. Then comes evaluation. Teachers use their experience and reflection to evaluate the success of the teaching unit. Based on the evaluation, what revision is needed? Are there new or different technologies that should be incorporated to revise the unit? Can the technology be better used to meet the goals? Based on their use of the 10-step process, the authors argue that it's a very useful way of integrating something into an existing curriculum. They point out that developing new units is a messy process, and I would certainly agree. The 10-step process provides some order. Developing new units is long and time-intensive. The 10-step process allows for breaking up the process. The 10-step process is a cyclical one that allows for development of the units over several semesters. It includes time for reflection, evaluation, and improvement of units. They point out that collaboration is key. Curriculum reform can fail without collaboration among teachers. Let's take a look at innovation in the creation of new materials. In creating new materials and activities, how do teachers integrate technology into the 10-step process? You have learned about a lot of the technologies that teachers are using throughout the world. How do the technologies that we talked about compare with what others are doing? There's probably no one better to ask that question than Professor Greg Kessler at Ohio University. He has been working as a call expert for many, many years. He's traveled throughout the world to work with teachers, and he works with a lot of teachers at his own program at Ohio University. I asked Professor Greg Kessler how the teachers he knows create new activities using technology. Let's listen. <laughs> 